Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you a shoutcast in a game between Polt Prime versus um, Z Nexus Hack here on Metalopolis. Polt Prime spawning as the blue Terran player. Meanwhile, um, Hack spawning as the light blue Terran player as well, or Cyan or Sky Blue. Um, it is blue versus blue, Terran versus Terran mirror match as we do get this game underway on Metalopolis. Now, this was, I believe, taken from the Korean servers as all the description um, that I found was in Korean. So I am going to assume that this is um, a Korean game here on Battle.net. And I am looking forward to this game already as the game gets underway. Korean players tend to play much more aggressively, um, trying to put down a lot of pressure, trying to balance between um, fast expansions versus early aggression versus late, ga late game macro play. And there is always, always something very exciting to watch. Pole Prime and now Hack, both players setting up a very fast supply depot. We should be getting up a barracks over here in just a moment. Pole Prime most likely has a slight advantage in terms of economy in finishing up that barracks as, yeah, there is about a one second difference between these two players' builds at this point. A one second difference, although it may not seem like much at the very start of the game, it just it can translate into a large number of um, advantages later on. As you can see, now Polt going in for that refinery. Meanwhile, we don't see a refinery com attempt coming in from Hack. So Hack, maybe, yes, he is going for an expansion attempt. He will be placing down the supply depot and then making or moving out with this one SCV. And this SCV, and as it's on its way out, will pass by the SCV of Polt, and Polt will pretty much know where exactly Hack is as well. But the only real difference is that Hack will not be, or sorry, Polt will not be able to figure out what Hack is doing in the long run. There is that another supply depot being built there. The wall off is already down. But based upon the timing, this SCV doesn't know if a gas has been placed down or not. The supply depot just looks like it was sitting there and minding its own business for quite some time. Meanwhile, an SCV now being forced to pull back. Will the Marine be able to get some damage onto that SCV? And oh, very nicely done by Hack, making sure to run away from that cliff. Um, the Gauss Rifle able to somehow shoot in between the building and get to the ground below. Back here, we are going to have this SCV now instead activate a Zelnaga Watchtower as we are going into Fast Hellions by Polt. Um, I do not actually believe this is going to be Fast Hellions. I do believe we are going to be having a refinery in just a moment and then going into Fast Banshee play. That is the smarter move at this point. Meanwhile, Hack instead going into Double Command Centers. Double Command Centers do work out pretty well as he is also going into Double Refineries. I don't see any additional production buildings though. So Hack is being very aggressive with his expansion attempt and if he's not careful, he'll really fall behind in the tech game. You can see that the factory is already in pl or nearly completed. A tech lab most likely will be added. Um, we should be getting in a starport as well as Polt sitting at 25 over 25. And now just simply waiting for that tech lab. Or is he going to actually try to train up a Hellion first? Not quite sure. There you go. Finally getting up that tech lab as we are now getting a marine wandering back and forth um hack the one thing that hack can do not quite sure why a mule was called over to just simply die over here and uh, one of the things hack will be forced to do is save up a lot of the energy on these orbital commands in order to do some scanner sweeps if he burns through those um, scanner sweeps a little bit too quickly he will not be able to handle the banshees and um, he doesn't have a missile turret i uh, no missile turret anywhere nearby as we are now going into a reactor down here another reactor as well and then perhaps finally adding on a tech lab taking a look at the army combinations next hack sitting at 28 over 38 compared to 32 over 35 marines thus still standing off and um, standing guard against each other as we are also adding a reactor down here so adding this reactor and adding this tech lab um Eight into the gas of of, of the, um, the the cloak research. So I am very interested to see what's going to be happening. This is only going to be one Banshee without cloak. Um, and it will have to be absolutely, absolutely perfectly microed by Polt in order to um, capitalize and really deal enough damage. There are a fair number of Marines. Marines now um, uh, moving out there. I don't see anything there. And there's the scanner sweep, not revealing any missile turrets. So now Polt has the green light to go and try to deal some damage. Um, it looked like... Um, it looked like this was being researched for just a moment. I can't imagine that to be the case as a Viking is now making is now moving out and now the Banshee able to get off two quick shots. You can see more Marines are try um, trying to um, come over in time. It looks like the SCVs are going to fall rather quickly as the Banshee 
getting in a lot of damage so far, but it needs to really maximize its range of six. So really maximizing the range of six and now getting off five kills. Uh, all of the units are worth um, 50 minerals each, so it was able to survive that. It has been, re it has recovered its resources in terms of cost and will live to fight again another day. Beautiful micro by this one banshee. We are now moving into siege tanks. We are going to have a, a reactor here. So we may be getting double Vikings now. So the Vikings are now going to be looking to take to the air and will be able to easily clean up Hack's one lone Viking. The problem is that Hack currently has double orbital commands, but he has no real way to establish an expansion down here either. A Marine activating this Onaga Watchtower as I assume that Pole Prime will be moving out with these four Vikings in just a moment. The siege tank, siege tech about to be completed as well. It needs about another 40 seconds. This one Banshee already back into play, ready to go, uh, completely repaired. As we are now going to have three Vikings and, and yeah, three Vikings. Oh, one poor, one Marine trying to fend off the rest of the attack there. And now in comes a very large group of units. The siege tanks could perhaps siege up here. And start shelling or perhaps an elevatoring up onto the high ground if we did in fact have um what's it called if we had any medevacs but there are no medevacs that i can see siege tanks are now see once again sieging as the siege tanks are slowly pushing their way forward only two siege tanks though as the marines are now shooting up onto the high ground one siege tank down over here siege tanks do not have siege tech over here as the vikings battle it out marines both sides engaging and now the vikings need to back off Two siege tanks are um, going to be able to exchange blows. And it looks like the Marines on here on the low ground going to focus down one of the siege tanks. One of the siege tanks does get taken down. Um, but both sides just, in, in, just exchanging a lot of blows at this stage. Siege tank against siege tank. This siege tank taking a lot of damage so far. And it looks like this Marine or this siege tank will get destroyed by an unseaged siege tank. And now Hack in a very nice position. He has the stronger... Uh, he ha he's in a nice fortified position there. And he just has to be a little bit careful as... He cannot take um, um, just siege tanks, bla siege tanks blast like that. We have three siege tanks here. A lot of SCVs trying to repair him and trying to keep his hopes alive. Meanwhile, we are getting Marines, siege tanks, and Vikings once again being pulled back. A command center finally being built down by Polt, but it is significantly late. He is behind on SCVs 27 compared to 36. The economy much stronger for Polto as he does have a mule as he was not being forced to use those scanner sweeps with that air superiority. Four siege tanks now uh, pushing out on that onto that low ground. It looks as though the hack wants to get build up as much of an army as he can before he moves out once more. But this one SCV may get taken down. No medevacs still, so no medevac there. And, and I'm curious as to um, why that is the case. That we do have a group of Vikings in the air, and Marines are now simply going to stim in, take down one of those Vikings, and uh, rather quickly able to do so as the SCVs are now looking to perhaps repair all of these Vikings. Orbital Command has been upgraded already. We can see the production value of Polt getting in two additional barracks or two two additional barracks and also getting some siege tanks and adding down a lot of reactors. So what four reactors and uh, four reactor barracks no gonna go for a tech lab instead as he definitely needs to start that research. There are Vikings patrolling in between the bases, making sure that no drops will be coming in at all. So yeah, Polt doing a good job trying to hold off against what he expects um, Hack to be doing. You can see that there are only Vikings now flying around and there is what four Vikings now making their, making their rounds trying to do some patrols. Hack currently sitting on 97 over 102 food. Meanwhile, we have 71 over 86 as the Vikings still patrolling in between these two locations. Another expansion attempt coming in from Polt um, at the 12 minute attempt in, or 12 minute mark in this game. He's trying to uh, once again reestablish this. The siege tanks are within combat range and are going to be able to shell out and take down these siege tanks in the center portion of the map, losing two siege tanks very needlessly. Hack in a very dominant position um, to just simply um, deplete the resources of Polt and now make a move and try to push out. The only problem is that Polt does have this expansion here about what 40% of the way and if Polt is able to get back into this game economically speaking, Hack will have an uphill battle to start to climb as he has not started his commander's center here at the 10 o'clock high ground 
third expansion. There are a lot of Vikings in the air. Six Vikings. These siege tanks trying to engage back. And the Marines are now using their stim packs. Will be able to get in a little bit closer. And it looks like the Marines, one siege tank up here. And both sides battling out. Vikings are now pushing their way through. These siege tanks are able to just blast apart the high ground there. And Polt not sieging his tanks. He's going to lose these tanks rather quickly. And now take a lot more damage. The Vikings are going to be able to, to just fly here. Shell out the damage. And take down the factory, perhaps even take down the barracks and the tech lab as well. The tech lab was able to finish that research on that combat shield. Vikings now going into ground mode. And that is going to definitely help out. The siege tanks trying to figure out where they can go. Unable to squeeze through here. And then that was just an unfortunate loss there. As more and more Vikings need to be trained up. Uh, Pulled Prime doesn't have that many re that many things he can do any longer. The Metavax also getting shut down there. Marines need to try to destroy those Vikings. And now a nice elevator drop of a couple Marines and a Siege Tank um, will be able to shut down Pult. And I believe Pult will be giving in the, um, the white flag, surrendering with the GG in just a few more moments. Uh, there is just simply too many Siege Tanks and too much pressure. And there it is. There's the GG coming in from Pult Prime, losing to, um, to Hack here on Metalopolis. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.